Thanks very much for the invite to come down to this wonderful place and probably the nicest meeting room I've been in for, for a long, long time, but it's lovely for you. Um, so I hail from Totnes, uh, originally London. Most of my working life has been... Of course, yes. Uh, I hail from, from London originally. I live in Totnes. I've been there for about eight years. And um, previously, most of my work has been with um, big corporations, so with the, the other side, as I, as I like to think of it. And, um, and I've always had this question about, isn't there a better way of, of doing this, of, of doing business, um, and of working with economists? Although I'm not an economist, I really see myself as a, as, a, as a regular person with an interest in this. And I think that's true of most of the people that I meet. So I work for the, the Transition Network. That's the organization that um, supports transition uh, around the UK and around the world. And my particular interest is this project called Reconomy, where we're looking at how we can help these transition groups to explore um, community-led economic transformation. So, so that's really what our interest is in this, in this part of transition. And I think there's two uh, questions that we're trying to answer with our work. Uh, the first one is what kind of livelihoods and businesses are needed given the challenges that we're facing? And secondly, how can we help create the conditions for people to, to bring this into being themselves? So without waiting for governments, for government money, for big employers to suddenly arrive, you know, how can we, how can we do this? How can we uh, grow this self-belief and this confidence and the skills that we can do this, we can take this on? So for the first question... Um, one of the things we wanted to do was, was to define what we mean by these new kinds of enterprises. So what kinds of businesses do we want to see in our communities, in our local economies? And um, we've come up with a kind of a draft set of characteristics. These are all up for discussion still, so we'd really welcome any input on these. But we think there's maybe five kind of characteristics that we'd like to see in these kinds of enterprises. So one is that the, the trade that's going on in some way strengthens community resilience. So it's not just trade for the sake of it. Um, it actually is doing something directly. It's impacting the local community. It's improving our food resilience, perhaps, or our access to energy. Um, and, and there's a number of other things, so like the appropriate resource use. So it's doing that within the limits of the resources that are available to us. And that means both fossil fuels, reducing fossil fuels, increasing renewables, but looking at all the materials that are used. Um, it's about more than profit. We're not anti-profit. Profit would be a good thing. And in fact, most of the small businesses um, that we see getting started would love to make some kind of profit at some point. Um, but it's more about what's done with the excess profits. That's what we have some questions about. Uh, we think the, these kind of enterprises, ideally, they want to be part of the community. They want to be connected. They want to be owned by the community where that's possible with the legal structures. Maybe that shares, cooperatives, whatever that kind of model is. And the last point is about appropriate localization because we talk a lot about relocalizing the economy. And what that means can really vary from sector to sector. So we talk about what's appropriate. So, you know, we can localise food. Usually we talk about a 30-mile radius for food. If you're talking about localising transport, it doesn't tend to make much sense for every village to have its own bus company, for example. So you need to pick the appropriate scale. Um, so as I say, we're kind of continuing to shape these, and we'd love some input on those. If, you're, if you want to discuss them at any point today, I'm around. And... Um, what we then decided would be helpful was to go and gather some of the best examples of these kinds of enterprises. You know, do they exist at the moment or is this just pie in the sky? And we went out around the UK, um, not just to transition places, but others, and we found 20 really fantastic examples of enterprises that meet this criteria. Collectively, they're turning over three and a half million pounds a year. Uh, they're employing over 100 people, plus about another 100 volunteers. So, you know, they're successful, they're sustainable, they're in local ownership. And what we were looking for were the examples that are highly replicable. So actually every community needs these, these kinds of businesses. You know, we have bakeries here, 
uh, community banks, local transport companies, you know, the really basic things that we all need. So these models are here and they're available and people can pick these up and they can run with them. And um, all of these enterprises are really happy to try and help people to do this as well. It's a real kind of sharing, non-competitive um, ethos, which is great. So these are all in, in different places around the UK, but I think the potential of this can be seen if we imagine them all happening in one place where the sustainable construction cooperative uses local building materials to build a new community store that's provided by the local baker, that delivers with the, uh, the community-owned delivery scheme for people who can't get to the shops, and it creates this kind of really strong ecosystem of these local businesses. So that's something we're starting to see that happen, but you know, it'd be wonderful to have a place that kind of intentionally set out to say, you know, which of these can we put in place here? Which, which do we already have? Which um, I'm sure is a, a number we're going to hear from today already. So, so that first question about what kinds of enterprises do we need, we feel there's a number of really good examples of those. And the second question about how do we create the conditions for people to bring them into being is uh, where in, in a few places we've been doing this thing called an economic blueprint, uh, which I know we'll be talking about more today. And um, in Totnes, the way we did it, we got together a number of the local economic players that you'd expect. So the council, um, the chambers of commerce, the local colleges, those kinds of organizations, local business organizations. And we got them together and had a really useful discussion about, well, what purpose do we want the economy to serve? Um, and we came up with something where it is to maximize the well-being of our entire community um, and to use and distribute resources fairly and respect natural limits. So, and I think, you know, most people looking at that would say, well, that seems pretty sensible. But it's actually really quite radical. That's not the purpose that underpins our economy at the moment. So we decided to do this work to really then explore um, what the potential is of that new economy. We, we knew we wanted to be taken seriously by the traditional uh, establishment, and particularly those who, who control the access to the funding. And one of the reasons we did this was to put some numbers on that economic potential. So we're not just people, you know, pie in the sky, oh, it could all be great and look at this, you know but to really put some hard numbers on that. So that was one of the reasons that we did the blueprint. Um, and I've got some copies here. Again, we'll uh, talk more about that um, later casually if you want to do that. Um, so one of the ways to help bring it into being is to have that clear vision and that partnership of organizations working together to support it and to set this direction. And then what we found is that we need to have a number of economic enablers in place. So the kinds of things that can then support existing local businesses and can nurture new ones to happen. And again, there's lots of examples from transition or from other places um, about innovative ways like uh, shop local campaigns, which, which aren't just, you know, put a sticker in the window and think that's going to be enough. Some really innovative things. Uh, Transition Dorking did something called a Golden Ticket Day and they got Mary Portis along to help promote it all. And um, the shops all offered a, a prize to people who shopped during that day. Um, my favourite one, I think, was the barber who offered to let the winner cut his hair. <laughs> so uh, that was quite a, you know, just fun, interesting, engaging, those kinds of things. Um, the middle one is bringing assets back into community ownership. This is uh, Transition... Um, and I was going out of my head, Darby, who, who brought their common, Whistlewood Common, back into community ownership, 10 acres of it, that was last in community ownership in, in 1791. And they brought that back in and they're establishing uh, a whole number of new food growing businesses on it. Um, and thirdly, setting up an incubator for new local businesses in, in Totnes. We have a economy centre um, which is supporting and establishing raise investment for these new kinds of businesses. So, you know, there's a whole range of things going on. And I know here, again, there's, there's a number of things happening already. Um, and I think the last point to make is that we do need to somehow have a bit of a shift in mindset about what our individual role is in supporting this new economy to come into being. And to realise that what we do and where we spend our money 
um, has an impact. And we can choose to spend our money in the big supermarkets, and that has a certain impact. And we can choose to spend it in local businesses, and that has a different impact. And I think one of our challenges is to really try and articulate clearly and in a compelling way what that impact is and help people to make the choice they want to make. So not in a judgmental way, supermarkets, bad, local, good, but just to say, look, you do that, you get this. You do that, you get all of this. You know. So that's kind of one of the challenges we're taking on. And one of the ways we're looking at this is to say we are all investors in our local economy. And even if we don't have much money to put into something, um, we can give time, we can give support. Uh, there was a, an example we have at the Local Entrepreneur Forum where we have four new businesses come along and pitch to the community. So just like the audience here, they came along and said, this is the kind of thing I need. And they just got this overwhelming, <coughs> lovely, heartfelt response from people who are giving money, who are saying, hey, I've got an old van I don't need. You can use it for distribution. I can give you some help with marketing. Um, and I can give you some massage. I can give you some childcare. And some people did have some significant money to put in as well. And it just shows, you know, there's this, this interest and this new way of going about nurturing and supporting and investing in these new enterprises. So... Those are some of, the, some of the things that we're experimenting with in a number of different places. And finally, uh, just to say, although we're talking um, about the UK, some of those examples, um, our economy is being picked up internationally. I'm working with people in 10 different countries at the moment. Um, from people in, in Brazil who are going to be running some economy sessions at the end of February in some of the favelas in Sao Paulo. So, in the, you know, you talk about inequality, it's right there, it's massively there, and they're choosing to work in those areas and say, well, what do we do about the economy here? And, um, and the guy in Mexico, Raul, I was speaking to the other day, and he was saying, you know, how do you do this? How do you relocalize an economy when it's run by the drug cartels? It's like, yeah, we don't really have that problem in Totnes. You know, we have a bit of, a bit of pot around. But, um, you know, so each of these places have their very unique challenges, and, and the answers will be from, from the people there, of course. So it feels, it feels really exciting. You know, it's something that's being picked up in lots of different places. Um, it's being given a different flavor. And, um, you know, we're finding these new ways of working. We have all these meetings online. No one's flying around the place, and it's just this very exciting, collaborative, open and sharing thing. So it's lovely to be here with you all and um, seeing you guys getting, getting interested and, and building on the stuff that you're already doing. So I look forward to hearing more today. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Thank